It is 100% confirmed now. Tyler Van Dyke is still the Miami Hurricane starting quarterback. And whether you like it or not, it makes sense. You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricane, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I am Alex Dono, your host. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and contributor to allhurricanes.com. And thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We are available free wherever you get your podcasts and free on YouTube. Today's episode is sponsored by Simply Safe Home Security with Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe. 24 7 monitoring agents capture evidence to accurately verify a threat for faster police response. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Visit simplysafe.com slash locked on college to learn more. Well, there is no more doubt heading into the North Carolina game. Mario Cristobal addressed the media on Monday. I, I was there in person. And Tyler Van Dyke is the starting quarterback still. And he will be the starting quarterback against the North Carolina Tar Heels. You guys obviously know I'm a big fan of Jake Garcia, and I think Jake is the future of that position in a Miami uniform. But honestly, confirming Tyler and giving Tyler another opportunity this coming weekend, it's the sensible thing to do, and it's the mature thing to do, okay? This coaching staff, when you're talking about overhauling and building a culture, trying to undo some of the lackadaisical stuff that Manny Diaz had created or allowed to perpetuate during his time, this coaching staff wants to send the message that they're not going to turn their back on players after a bad outing or two. I think creating stability and continuity is an important part of that culture that they're trying to build here. Allowing players to work through their own mistakes that's something they're trying to teach. That's something they're trying to empower into these guys. And let's not play dumb here on something. Benching a quarterback, it isn't the same thing as benching a linebacker or a guard. The quarterback position is unique. That spot requires more stability than any other on the field. Um, and when we're talking about this decision to stick with Van Dyke, Honestly, I could talk all day about it, and we've talked a lot about it and speculated on it before it was made official. But really, folks, one of the best synopsises on this or synopses on this was actually coming from one of our YouTube commenters. And yeah, I do read pretty much all the YouTube comments, okay, including the random ones that come from Oregon fans who just show up to trash Mario every day. But a YouTube commenter who goes by random thought. I thought had a great point on Van Dyke. He said, quote, of course he should remain the starter. What is this? A one game, you win a job or lose a job program? Come on, Canes fans. Stop being so damn emotional, he says. I've been a Canes fan for 35 years. No quarterback musical chairs. Let's be adults and a mature program, he says. Starting quarterbacks can have bad performances. They're human, you know. So let's say Jake comes in and wins, he says, then loses the next game after that with a blase performance. Do you then go back to TVD? Switching quarterbacks like that shows instability and emotional decisions. Boom. That was beautiful. Uh, we get some awesome comments from our listeners and viewers every day, but that's got to be one of the best I've ever seen. And it was such a good comment that if you, if you go back and, and read it like on our – I think it was the YouTube video we posted of Cristobal because I, I taped Cristobal speaking yesterday and, and we posted it. Um, even people in the comments who thought Jake should start were actually agreeing with this commenter because he made so many good points. Right. And, and I'll start with the musical quarterbacks thing, you know, and I've been a Canes fan for about as long as that commenter has. I'm 38 years old. So about 35 years sounds about right. Right. I mean, you could say I've been a Canes fan my entire life, but when I was one and two years old, I don't know if I remember too many of the details from those games, but yeah, over the years, especially in recent years, when the team's been mediocre and bad sub years, uh, most of us have criticized at times coaches like Mark Richt and Randy Shannon when they played musical quarterbacks, right? You remember when Mark Richt would just wake up in the morning and however he felt, now I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to start Malik Rozier today, or I'm going to start Nikosi Perry today. And Randy Shannon did it with 
uh, with Ja'Cory Harris and Robert Marv that one year. So we didn't like that, right? So let's give Mario Cristobal the benefit of the doubt here. And yes, you do still have Jake Garcia in your back pocket if things don't get better for Tyler. And I asked Cristobal about Garcia's progress yesterday. And of course, they feel great about what he's doing. And they feel great about the confidence that he showed when he came into that Middle Tennessee game. But they're sticking with Tyler Van Dyke. And listen, Van Dyke, he was one of the top quarterbacks in the country from mid-October on last year. ACC Rookie of the Year. And to continue on to that, because I know some people just thought, based on what he did last year, the new coaches came in and they just handed him the job. Like, that's not exactly the way that it played out, okay? Like, Tyler Van Dyke was still Miami's best quarterback in spring practices last year, or heading into this year, and then fall camp heading into this year. Like, he wasn't just strictly handed this job by a new staff. He actually did earn it. And, you know, as random thought, uh, you know, implied in that comment, and this is something I've been saying all along, even when I've, you know, I, I rallied for Jake at times over the last week, but I have agreed with this all along that if you take the job away from Tyler Van Dyke, then you can't just turn back from him if Jake struggles, right? So giving Tyler the chance to bounce back in conference play, it makes too much sense, right? Because let's also remember we're opening the ACC schedule this week. Like we still have all of our ACC games in front of us, including North Carolina. We still have to play Clemson, Florida state, Virginia tech, Virginia, everybody in the coastal. So it, it does seem a little crazy if you were to just bench your starting quarterback, who was so good last season before you played a single conference game. Like I, I've seen some Canes fans who were, and listen, um, when you lose to Middle Tennessee, that's like a come to Jesus moment. It's like fans like reevaluate every opinion they have on the team, and we get a little crazy. But yeah, I've seen some people that are like, you know what, screw it, let's just play all the young players. Like forget about forget about the juniors and seniors, just bench everybody, let all the true freshmen play. It's like that's not something you do at two and two when you haven't played a single conference game. Like you know, you can't. I mean, okay. If, if we're, God forbid, a couple months from now, we still have only two wins and we're like two and six, two and seven, then okay, maybe at that point you empty out the bench and let the young guys play. But I'm not going to throw in the towel on the season when still technically you can win the ACC and win the Coastal. Like I'm, I'm not ready to turn the page on every single player with experience here, okay? Um, and also, uh, I think it's important to bring up some of what Cristobal said yesterday about Tyler, because, of course, he talked a lot about Van Dyke. Um, based on what Mario Cristobal told us yesterday, Monday, in the media session, Cristobal seems to feel that many, if not most of the problems in the passing game are not necessarily Van Dyke's fault. Here's what Mario Cristobal said. He was asked by Manny Navarro of The Athletic about Tyler's mechanics, right? Have have TVD's mechanics been off this year compared to last year? And Cristobal said, quote, I wouldn't say it's mechanical. We've got to do a really good job of creating, or sorry, cleaning things up for him. And we've got to do a really good job with the supporting cast. Quarterback is the hardest position, Cristobal said. So we have to make it as clean and as clear for him to operate at a high level, especially when you're in a new system. So I wouldn't say anything about him mechanically. He's working hard and busting his butt. Uh, talking about the Middle Tennessee game, Cristobal said, it was a rough game. He's had a really good week since then, though. And he's got as much or more pride than anyone I've ever been around, and we have all the confidence in the world in him. He wasn't saying it directly, but let me know in the comments if you feel the way that I do that Mario is basically admitting there that the offensive coaching hasn't been up to par. And I do think Cristobal firmly believes in his philosophy and the way he wants to run an offense. And that's why he decided Josh Gaddis would be, you know, out of the candidates that were available, this is the guy to come in and install the kind of offense I want. Okay. But that doesn't mean. <laughs> that the coordinator and the offensive coaches are necessarily doing everything they possibly can to make that transition easy for your quarterback and for everyone else. So I don't know. 
honestly, I take that quote. This is me reading into it. I take that quote as a sign that Cristobal understands the offensive coaching, uh, whether it be Gaddis, Ponce, or of course Mario being the one overseeing those coaches, hasn't been up to par. And they haven't done everything in their power to put Tyler in a position to succeed and thrive in that offense. I think he is admitting that. I think he is admitting that the coaching and perhaps the play calling needs to be at another level. I, I think he's admitting that. It's something we're all seeing, but I think that's Mario's way of admitting it. And, you know, uh, and Cristobal doesn't like to throw players under the bus. And included in that is, you know, and again, I'm, I can't blame everything on everyone else because Tyler has also been missing open throws and he's also been staring down receivers. So in no way am I saying that Van Dyke is still perfect, right? He was darn near perfect at the end of last year. It's not been perfect this year, but let's also not forget about, you know, the wide receiver core being decimated and dropping passes left and right. I mean, they had seven drops. Some of those were running backs, but running backs and receivers had seven drops against Texas A&M. Right. I mean, if you had two drops instead of seven drops, you probably win that football game, for example. OK, so uh, I think Cristobal is admitting like if I were to bench Van Dyke after, you know, a couple of really tough offensive games, then I'm basically scapegoating Van Dyke for problems that are not all near his fault. Right. That there are a lot of things other than him. So I'm not going to scapegoat the starting quarterback when everything from coaching and execution at all the other positions also needs to be better. So I think that's part of the reason why this is a mature decision, right? Because, you know, if you bench Van Dyke when a lot of these problems are not quarterback related, then you're basically scapegoating and potentially ruining your quarterback to try to save the reputations and the jobs of other people on the coaching staff and other players on the field. So I'm going to read some of you guys' thoughts because, uh, as you can imagine, our YouTube comment section has been erupting like a volcano. And you can tweet us at Locked on Canes. That's our show account. You follow us at Locked on Canes. We will follow you back. You can also tweet my personal at Alex Dono. Dono spelled D-O-N-N-O. Also, guys, and we're going to have this right when we come back, so stick with us. We're not going anywhere. We have a lot of content coming up on this episode of Locked on Canes. Things aren't sounding so good from an injury standpoint. We'll give you what we know right after we talk about the awesome folks at Simply Safe. The numbers do not lie. In the last decade, over 4 million people have chosen Simply Safe home security to protect their homes. You don't earn the trust of that many people without doing something right. At Simply Safe, your safety is the only thing that matters. And I know because I use Simply Safe in my home, guys. They protect you with cutting edge security technology powered by 24 7 professional monitoring agents who always have your back. Guys, here's why I love it the technology is incredible, right? I remember the alarm system that we had at, at my, my childhood home when I was a kid. And it's like the alarm would go off. You couldn't figure out how to stop it. And the police, maybe they'll show up, maybe they won't. Guys, we simply say, whether it's controlling your system from your phone with the app, which is incredible. You can watch the crystal clear HD live stream of your security cameras. And there's a wide variety of high tech sensors. I feel like I'm living in the 22nd century with this thing, man. With 24 seven professional monitoring, simply safe agents call you the moment a threat is detected and dispatch police or first responders in an emergency, even if you're not home or can't be reached. So customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash locked on college. Save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free. Visit simplysafe.com slash locked on college to learn more. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We are available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. Oh, so let's talk about injuries, okay? Uh, there's some we know, and there are some that are gray areas that we're going to know more about later in the week. So Cristobal, he always speaks on Mondays, and he usually speaks on Wednesdays as well. So we'll know more from Mario's mouth on Wednesdays. Unfortunately, Elijah Arroyo, Got banged up against Middle Tennessee. Um, sounds like he's going to be close to a game-time decision. Cristobal did say that Arroyo 
he is definitely in jeopardy not to play. He may not be recovered in time to play this week. So you're you're talking about taking another weapon away from the passing game, right? We know Xavier Restrepo out with the broken foot. Cristobal said it's going to be at least another five and a half weeks for him. Whew. I haven't done the math in my head, but I'm guessing if it's another five and a half weeks, he probably won't be ready till after the Florida State game, which is tough to hear. Uh, Jacoby George, of course, injured with the broken thumb. Uh, Mario said the timetable is a little bit less clear with Jacoby. Um, so he didn't really want to speculate on that. Um, but it's, you know, it's going to be multiple weeks before we can see Jacoby George again. I guess the timetable for his thumb is more difficult to figure out than Restrepo's timetable. And yeah, we're monitoring the running backs. We are monitoring the running back position in a big way. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a final status or anything close to it with Henry Parrish who left that game against MTSU injured and Jalen Knighton who got banged up, aggravated an injury against MTSU. We're hoping that these guys are going to be ready. We don't have confirmation on them yet. Oh man. If uh, you know, and I like Thad Franklin, I do, <laughs> but if Parrish and Knighton, God forbid, both have to miss this game, Thad will be your only scholarship running back, you know, against a team where you're just going to have to keep up with, right? Because North Carolina, we know how dangerous their offense is. They're going to be scoring points. Even if your defense plays considerably better than they played two weeks ago or two games ago, uh, two weekends ago, I should say, even if your defense plays significantly better, North Carolina is still going to score. They're still going to put up big yards. Miami's going to have to keep up with them. And if, Thad Franklin is your only scholarship running back. And then Devon Perry and Lucius Stanley have to like, you know, get like 10 carries a piece or, or, you know, 15 touches a piece. Then this game could get really, really tough because, you know, then, then you can make life a lot harder on Tyler Van Dyke if you can't open anything up for him with the running game. So we don't know about Miami's top two running backs. We're going to find out more later this week. Um, other players we don't have a clear idea of, uh, Tyreek Stevenson, he left the game against Middle Tennessee. We don't have a firm update on him either, but Kevin Steele, the defensive coordinator, did say he didn't speculate on his status, but he did say, as far as I know, he's doing fine. So fingers crossed on that one. Uh, going back to the offense, remember Zion Nelson didn't suit up against Middle Tennessee. Um and Lou Headley, also the punter, did not suit up and play. Thankfully, the backup punter looked really good if, if he's needed. Uh, here's another quote from Cristobal about the injuries. He said, we have some guys that will be out but are not going to be able to – We uh, sorry, let, let me make sure I read this correctly. We have some guys that will be out but are not going to be able to give a full assessment on that till the end of the week, he said. We are working to get healthy. Guys are on a positive path to get healthy again, but we're not all the way there. That's very vague. He was asked specifically about Zion Nelson. He said, quote, there was a setback before Middle Tennessee. We expect it will be close, similar to the start of the season. So that could be a game time decision type. Um, we're playing the best guys that we have, Cristobal said. So I don't know. It sounded. It, it sounds like it's going to be touch and go with a handful of players. It could be touch and go with Zion, very touch and go with Arroyo. But it sounds like Arroyo is going to miss this game, and could be touch and go with Henry Parrish and Jalen Knighton as well. So um, that's going to be tough if we're not playing with a full deck once we take on the North Carolina Tar Heels. That would be very very tough. All right. So when we got the uh, the confirmation from Cristobal yesterday that Tyler Van Dyke is still the starting quarterback. I threw it out there on Twitter at Locked on Canes. Do you guys like this decision by coach? It's still TVD time. And by the way, for those who are watching the YouTube feed, I am wearing my TVD t-shirt today. I support these players. I do not turn my back on anyone. I am Tyler Van Dyke's biggest fan this week. Uh, I want him to bounce back and play absolutely great. But I threw that out there. Do you guys uh, do you guys like this decision by Cristobal? Uh, let me read you some of the responses. And again, you can follow us on Twitter at Locked On Canes. If you follow us, we will follow you back. Robert says, "I think as long as Tyler has a short leash." But Mario said some interesting stuff about playing to the player's strengths. 
which means Gaddis needs to start scheming spread into his system for his offense to get going. TBD still has to use his eyes better, though. Uh, Robert, we think very much alike. And, and Josh Gaddis did uh, did define Miami's offense as a power spread. That's how they that's how they define it. Uh, Jason says either decision had pitfalls. No unquestionably bad or good choice with the decision uh, to be made. So, yeah, and he's right. Listen, if, if they had gone with Jake Garcia, you are risking something with a less experienced quarterback. And you're also, uh, you know, basically turning the page on the TVD story, right? Because if, if you switch to Jake, you really can't switch back. Barring injury, of course. So there were pitfalls, right? I mean, you're you're starting the guy who hasn't played well, choosing him over the younger, inexperienced guy, which is by definition a risky move. So there was no perfect choice. Maybe they should have just said Jakari Brown. It's your team. No, not, not really. But no, the, it, he's right about that. That there was no easy decision to make. Uh, Kane's big in 2022 says. I wanted Garcia based on this season. If we get TVD from last season, then no brainer, he says. Gaddis needs to plan TVD success. Enigma says, I trust the process, as we all should, right? Uh, Matt Hurst says it was his only option. <laughs> uh, Neo sent us a gif that says that leash is so tight on Tyler come get it if you want it says because i referred to him as tvd in the tweet and this guy says his name is now tyler he has not earned a nickname this year at all <laughs> so we got to use the man's christian name now we, we can't we can't use his stick he can't be tvd he's got to be tyler now you guys are too funny um smitty says not surprised at all growing pains Ken says, yes, I do like the decision. Van Dyke showed he was an elite passer last year and we'll get it going here. Magnius says, absolutely, he likes it. You have to give him the opportunity to play himself out of the funk he's been in all year. It's too early to throw in the towel on TVD. Ibisville says, 100% the right call. If he struggles, you can always go to Jake. It can't be a quarterback carousel, thank you. And even if he throws a pick, fans need to relax and trust the coaching staff. Um, it's a it's a you thing, says, yep, TVD starts, short leash if he struggles. More problematic to go to Garcia, Jake struggles, and then you try to go back to your starter, who you proved you had no confidence in. I couldn't have said it better myself. Honestly, some of you guys are doing a better job with my show than I am this week. Keep up the great comments. You guys are awesome. Uh, Jason says, yes, it's the right decision. He struggled but he's not getting much help. They have to find something that works. And by the way, I'm not purposely cherry picking the positive comments. I'm just literally reading them in the order that I see them. So I don't want anyone to think, oh, this guy's just being selective and he's only reading the ones that support the decision. I'm literally just reading them, okay? Uh, Armando says, yes, right decision by coach. Nix says, I'm cool with it. New staff is only four games in. It's frustrating right now but this will take time. At the same time, there are high expectations for this staff. Let me see if I can find like a negative one, just so you guys like know that I'm, I'm being fair. Okay. Uh, Dorian says, I don't like it, but I understand the PR play. Okay. So he thinks this is more about like off the field stuff than on the field stuff. Um, let me see. I'm, I'm trying to, again, like I'm trying to find most of these comments are supporting, not against it. Um, dang, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking for some more that are against. It. Okay. Dirty South TV says, nope. I feel it's the Titanic of our season. Everything sinks this season with this loss, he says. I guess he's North Carolina is the Titanic, he's saying, uh, or will make Miami the Titanic. He says, Mario will learn a real big, real hard lesson with this loss, or he completely surprises me with a whole new team that shows up, ready to ball out and dominate. So, I mean, I don't really like the fact that you're already considering this game to be a loss before it's even been played. But, you know, again, to be fair, I wanted to show you that there are some negative comments out there. We got to talk a little recruiting when we come back. Why is Miami canceling a visit with a four-star wide receiver? Don't we need receivers? Why is Miami canceling visits with a player that could potentially really help you? We'll get to that and more when we come back, guys, 
if you haven't tried Built Bar Puffs yet, you are depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? There's a new flavor, and it's my favorite, delicious, indulgent cookie dough. It's covered in chocolate. Built has done it again. My new favorite, the cookie dough chunk puffs, have a light and chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks. And of course, yeah, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. All the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of actually making it. Plus, it's healthy for you. Cookie dough chunk puffs are only 160 calories, and they have a whopping 15 grams of protein in them. I ate one of these guys, no lie, about 45 minutes ago. I love them. So run to Built.com and snag a box for you and the family. It will be the perfect treat. Like all Built Bars, the new Cookie Dough Chunk Puff is covered in 100% real chocolate. That means they're healthy and tasty. Chocolate-covered cookie dough with a light, fluffy texture. It's so good. What's great about Built is that all of their bars are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. So eat something that tastes good and is good for you. You're going to love the new Cookie Dough Chunk Puff, whether you need a snack for your workout, a late-night treat, or you just need to grab a quick bite. Built is the perfect protein bar, and they taste better than a candy bar. Ditch the calories, the fat, and the sugar, and grab yourself a Built Bar. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKEDON15, and get 15% off your order. Use promo LOCKEDON15. Thank you so much for making Locked On Canes your first listen today and your first watch. We're available free wherever you get your podcast. part of the awesome Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. On tomorrow's episode, we are going to dive deep on Miami's defense. Uh, we got very caught up in some offensive stuff today. Uh, so we're going to break things down, what Miami has to do, what Miami is looking to do, because Kevin Steele, the defensive coordinator, has spoken this week. And I appreciated the accountability he took for the struggles against Middle Tennessee. And obviously, it's going to be all about how Miami can turn it around this week against North Carolina. Um this is a very interesting recruiting update. So we've been tracking for about the last week. There's a wide receiver out of Lincoln, Nebraska. And yeah, the Nebraska Cornhuskers are considered the favorite for this player. I mean, lives right in their backyard. Malachi Coleman, but he's still uncommitted. It's not committed. And um, lately, uh, Miami has looked very interested in Malachi Coleman. Listed at six foot five. Really quick, runs uh, in the 10-4 range in the 100-meter dash, like track speed, looks really tall and lanky on paper and runs really fast. Uh, seems to be an excellent player, four-star player. Um, but schools are starting to cancel visits with him, which is weird. I mean, in Miami's case, maybe I'm making too much of this because supposedly they want to reschedule. They didn't cancel with him outright. Uh, but Malachi Coleman, you know, tweeted about this yesterday that, uh, because I think it was Gabby Arudia from inside the U tweeted that UM has uh, they're rescheduling Coleman's visit. And he says it was canceled by UM, not by him. Right now, according to Matt Shodell of Kane Sport, uh, Miami actually wanted to reschedule him. So they still want a visit to happen. They wanted to reschedule him for the end of the high school season to get kind of the last look at him before signing day. But Ole Miss also recently canceled uh, an official visit he was supposed to take there, which is, which is, I don't know, it's odd, right? I mean, whether Miami's canceling or rescheduling, it's odd here. And again, I'm not an expert on Lincoln, Nebraska high school. Um, I haven't watched this player in person. Um, I don't know. There, there are, it, it looks like there's a little bit of smoke here. People have told me that maybe he had some, he's had some disciplinary issues in high school and, I'm also seeing reports that there may be discrepancies in his actual height. Is he actually six foot five, which he's listed as? So I don't know. There's there seems to be some some fishy stuff here. Uh, based on the footage I have watched of Malachi Coleman, he looks like a really good, capable wide receiver. And listen, we know Miami needs wide receivers. Like they've got a couple good ones verbally committed already in the class, and Robbie Washington, Ray Ray Joseph, both four stars. We need more and we need size. Like we need someone who's in that six five frame. Is Malachi Coleman actually six foot five? <laughs> Stay tuned. We will find out. Uh, but supposedly uh Miami wants to to reschedule his visit for a different time. Uh, you know, hopefully that happens and hopefully we identify some big time wide receiver targets. 
Uh, we are going to be talking some recruiting. We're going to drop a bonus episode later today. John Garcia from Sports Illustrated is going to join us. So we're going to have more recruiting for you and more info on Malachi Coleman a little bit later. I want to remind you guys, get more on the ACC by making Locked on ACC your second listen. Host Candace Cooper and the local experts take you across the ACC in 30 minutes. Make Locked on ACC your second listen. Thank you for making us your first. We'll talk to you again later with John Garcia Jr. right here on Locked on Canes, part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.